We're now going to learn how to factor a trinomial. It's a trinomial because there's three pieces. It's still a polynomial. Tri is just a fancy term for a polynomial. And again, this is the part I really, really need you to find a way to understand, to memorize, to know how to do this for the future. So first of all, we're factoring. Notice it's an ax squared plus bx plus c. a is 1 today. b is 10. c is 24. If this was written up as ax squared plus bx plus c. a is 1, b is plus 10, c is plus 24. So to factor this, your first step when you're a factor a trinomial of the form x squared plus 10x plus 24, or the x squared x number, is you need to find all of the parts, maybe we'll write this down, find what multiplies to c, c is 24, and adds to b. That is the first thing that should come to you when you see an x squared and x in a number. So, what multiplies to 24 and adds to 10. So a quick way to do this, well, not a quick way, but maybe the best way, is find out what multiplies to 24. The number 24 is 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, 4 times 6. So all of these multiply to 24, but which of these, if we change that multiply to add, would add to b? Because we're looking for what multiplies to c, well, these all multiply to 24, and adds to b. So which of these would add to 10? Well, 1 and 24, if we added them, would be 25. 2 and 12, if we added them, would be 14. 3 and 8, if we added them, would be 11. 4 and 6, if we added them, would be 10. And that was the B we were looking for. So what we are going to do now is we're going to use 4 and 6. Because 4 and 6 are the two numbers that, when multiplied, equal C, and when added, equal B. Now, the way this works is this. You can take the question from its start. And the trick to math is you cannot ever un you can't ever do something that can't be undone. Okay? It needs to be able to be undone. So, using the 4 and the 6, we're going to break our middle term up into those two. So 10 is 4 plus 6, so 4x plus 6x plus 24. Now I haven't broken any rules because x squared is x squared, 4 and 6x are 10x plus 24. So I haven't changed it, um, its value. I've changed the way it looks, but its value still holds the same. Now to factor these, what your steps will be will be to break it in half, and factor these two using the common factors we used last day, and then factor these two using the common factors we last day. So x squared and x share an x in common. So I'm going to factor out the x, and I'm left with x squared divided by x is x, 4x divided by x is 4, and now on the other side, 6x and 24, well, 6 and 24 share a 6 in common. So uh, 6x divided by 6 is x. 24 divided by 6 is 4. And I know I've done it correctly if my brackets are the exact same. And remember, you, can, you know you're right if you haven't broken any rules. So can you get back to where you started? x times x is x squared x times 4 is 4x. Good. 6 times x is 6x. 6 times 4 is 24. Good. So I could work my way back up to where I got. And now for your final answer, you have x 
times this, and plus 6 times this. And these two pieces are the exact same. So we're, when we did FOIL earlier, think of it as undoing your FOIL. We have an x and a plus 6 times the x plus 4s. So notice it's x, this x times this piece, and this 6 times this piece. And this now is our final answer. This is the factored form of x squared plus 10x plus 24. Because remember, factored means take out all the parts that can be multiplied to get back to where you started. So x plus 6 times x plus 4. If you try it, I guess, go back and practice your FOIL that we just did. If you FOIL this or use the box method, you will get back to where you started, which is how you know you've done it correctly. Okay? So again, the way this is always going to work is you are looking for two numbers that multiply to the C and add to B. So I took my 24 and I found all my 24 times tables, or not times tables, but what multiplies to get 24. And I figured which ones added to my B, which added to 10x? Well, 4 and 6 added to 10. So I took my original problem and I split the middle piece up into the two numbers I found. So 10x is 4x plus 6x. Step two, I cut it in half, and now I factor the left side. These two pieces had an x in common. These two pieces had a 6 in common. And what was left over when I factored out the x and the 6 was an x plus 4 and an x plus 4. So I get the outside pieces x plus 6 times one of my brackets. Okay, let's look at another example. This stuff is tricky and terribly important for the future. So, we'll look at this one here. m squared minus 4m minus 21. So our steps. What multiplies to c, so what multiplies to negative 21, but adds to b? So, let's see. The multiples of 21 are 1 times 21 and 3 times 7. But notice, this is negative 21. So, I can rewrite this as 1 and negative 21, negative 1 and 21, because those each multiply to negative 21, negative 3 times 7, and positive 3 times negative 7. Each of those multiplied will be negative 21. But let's see what they add to. 1 plus minus is minus. So 1 minus 21 is negative 20. That's not it. Negative 1 plus 21 is 20. Negative 3 plus 7 is 4. 3 plus minus, plusing a minus is negative, so 3 minus 7 is negative 4. So the two numbers I am going to work with are 3 and negative 7. So um, let's do this now. So we have m squared minus 4m minus 21 is my original question. I'm going to break the middle term into the two pieces that fit my criteria. So it was a plus 3m and a minus 7m. Now it doesn't matter what order you go, if you went minus 7 plus 3 it still works out. So step 2 was cut it in half and let's factor what these two have in common. They both have an m in common. So if I factor an m out, m squared divided m is m, 3m divided m is 3. On the other side negative 7 and negative 21. Now remember back to this question. I need these brackets to be the exact same. If I take a 7 out, I'll end up having a minus in there. I need this bracket to be the same. So how can I get m plus 3 out of this? I need this to be a plus, so I need to take out a negative 7 
from both pieces. And to make sure you've done it correct, can you go back? m times m, m squared, good. m times 3, 3m, good. Negative 7 times m is negative 7m, good. Negative 7 times 3 is negative 21, good. And my answer is I take the two parts out in front, m minus 7, and I take the brackets that are being repeated, and I take them once. And if you want, go ahead, foil these, expand them the way we did at the start of this video, and you will get back to here. Now, one thing I want to point out really quickly. I showed you this long method because it's really important to next day, and I want you to see it. But whenever there's a 1 here, you can do it really quickly, okay, because it's 1m squared. Your two numbers using 3 and minus 7, well, that's just what's going to go in the answer. It's using an m, so you have an m plus 3. There it is. And you have an m minus 7. There it is. I really need you to learn the long method, though, because the shortcut won't work when other numbers other than 1 get here. But whenever you see a 1 here, go ahead and use this method. All you need to do is the first part, m plus 3, m minus 7. And in the first example, it was x squared, and we used 4 and 6. So x plus 4, there it is, x plus 6, there it is. Again, only works if there's a 1 here. It's a 1x squared, so it works, okay? In this case, we have a 4x squared plus 32x plus 60. And this question is just combining the last two lessons you've done. So for this one, there's common factors here that we can take out, okay? 4x squared, 32x plus 60. These all have a 4 in common, 4, 32, and 60. So if I factor out a 4, 4x four squared divided by 4 is x squared. 32 divided by 4 is 8x. 60 divided by 4 is 15. Now I have the, fact, the common type we've been using today, x squared plus 8x plus 15. So what two numbers multiply to 15 and add to 8? Well, 15 is 15 times 1 and 5 times 3. When we add these, 15 plus 1 would be 16, so it's not that. 5 plus 3 is 8. So I'm going to use 5 and 3. And using the shortcut method I just showed, don't forget the 4 out front, but now in our brackets, x plus 5 x plus 3. And a second way they might try and trick you up is they might put it in a different order than you're used to. So here we have a 6, a minus 5x, and an x squared. We like to see the biggest letter variables first. So x squared, then the x's, then the numbers. So rewriting this is x squared then minus 5x plus 6. So I've reordered it. Now, what we're going to do here is what multiplies to 6 and adds to negative 5. Well, 6 is 6 times 1 and 3 times 2. But neither of these add to 5. The reason is because 6 could also be negative 6 times negative 1, because two negatives make a positive, or negative 3 times negative 2. Now let's add. 6 and 1 would be 7. 3 and 2 would be 5. Negative 6 minus 1 is minus 7. Minus 3 minus 2 is minus 5. And that is my B value. So what I'm going to do, the shortcut method, two brackets, we're using x's. Again, this method, shortcut method, only works when it's a 1x squared, minus 3, minus 2. If the question asks you anything about algebra tiles, just ignore that. Do the part of the question that is not involving the rectangles or the algebra tiles. And for each question, if you just do the odd letters, a, c, e, if it goes higher than that, G, I, so on.